Hello and welcome to Threes to Wound. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a bat rep, it's a kill team bat rep, but it's something a little bit different. Some of you may have seen, you may not have seen, uh, I've been putting out a few different shorts uh, recently, I guess a little bit more close to home about the hobby life, but also my hobby wife, or um, <laughs> trying to get my wonderful wife into kill team, getting her to jump ship into the hobby wholeheartedly. It's been tough, but due to the huge response the videos actually got, a lot of people were saying, you got to play. And we hit the likes goal she set for us to get her playing a game. And well, here we are. Now, the catch being, there's some caveats here. I did let her pick her own team. She picked the Tau. Um, yeah, it was tough. Um, tough moments there uh, when she made that choice, but. Anyway, sorry, lost for a second there. Um, that was the choice she made. Uh, and in choosing her own team, she had showed a bit of a liking for the Corsairs as well. So I decided to dust them off as the team I would play. So Pathfinders versus the Void Scarred, big guns versus fast movement and lots of stabbing in close combat. It's a pretty cool matchup. Obviously, this is also a learning game. So if you're here for a competitive game, this may not be the bat rep for you. This is meant to be uh, an enjoyable game of someone getting their first rounds in playing. Um, so there was a few little things we uh, we did to make the game a little bit easier. I decided to give the Tau or the Pathfinders Seek and Destroy. I would never do this in the world, like the real world. They are too good as it is, especially right now on Beta Decima. That would be just ludicrous. But I just thought it was going to tie in a lot better with what JJ was already trying to learn with well, capturing objectives and shooting your opponent and killing guys. I thought that that was going to be a good combo. We played it pretty fast and loose with some of the um, strategic and the tactical ploys too. Um, obviously, I wanted to encourage her to use those, but there are a lot of rules to download, especially with the Pathfinders, who are not a beginner's team. Um, I would have definitely preferred maybe Justian, uh, Intercession, uh, you know, even Legionaries, you know, maybe an elite team, um, that just, you know, really help you by covering up a lot of uh, holes in your knowledge in the game. But she wanted to play. Well, enough waffling. That's it. Let's jump into the start of the game. Check out the teams, the deployment and the mission. Today's mission setup is flank and we'll be playing capture. So if you control the point at the end of the turn, it remains yours until an enemy operative takes it away. Now to the battlefield to see the first roll to see who is the attacker and the defender. Ready, one, two, three. Ooh, so you win, that's a six. So the tower win the first dice roll and they choose the deployment zone along the bottom of the screen. Let's jump in and have a look at the Corsair team. They are led, of course, by the Falark. I think I'm saying that right. This is the leader. He's got a power weapon and a neuro disruptor. He's also got that powerful ability to group activate. So definitely something I want to be taking advantage of in this battle. We've got the fake dealer who is our sniper extraordinaire. For the gunner, I've given him the blaster. It's one of the most consistent and reliable damage dealers in the game. I've got the Kanathi. I've got the Kurnight Hunter. Shade Runner, who I'm hoping to use the little sneaky ability to fly over enemies and deal out some mortal wounds. The Soul Weaver, who's going to be doing the wonderful thing of keeping my guys alive. The Star Storm Duelist, and of course, the Psychic Shenanigans Wayseeker. On the other side of the ledger, we have the Tau being piloted by JJ today. Their leader, of course, is the Shazwi Pathfinder, who's going to be bravely leading from the back, I'm sure. We've got the Assault Grenadier Pathfinder, a little bit worried about this guy. He's got some tricksies with those grenades and I'm gonna have to keep an eye on him. There's the Blooded Pathfinder, the Communication Specialist, the Drone Controller Pathfinder, and he's bringing with him today the Recon Drone and the Gun Drone. There's definitely a little bit of play there with him being able to take over them for a bit of group activation shenanigans. So I'm hopefully gonna take him out as quick as possible. We've got the Marksman for a bit of sniping. There's the medical technician. This guy needs to die. I don't want to be killing any of these gunners twice and I don't want anyone getting healed up, that's for sure. We've got the Transpectral Interference Pathfinder and then there's two weapons expert pathfinders. We've got one with the ion rifle and one with the rail rifle. The big thing about both these weapons is they don't have the heavy keywords, so they're very mobile and still able to put out a whole bunch of hurt. 
I've decided to go with recon today. I just think that's gonna suit the speed of my Corsairs. At least that's the plan. So I've chucked in recover item as I'm very confident with those early turn dashes I can get up the board quickly. Vantage point is another great one for this map. There's two vantage points very clearly in the middle of the battlefield that should make for an easy get. Courier is one that I always feel a little bit funny about um, because I always do a terrible job of getting it, i.e. calling who's going to get it and then actually getting that operative there because plans change. I'm going to give it another crack today and see if I can score some points. Let's head over and look at the deployment. Barricades went down here, both of us just making a little bit of protection on those objectives on the left side of the board and also giving us a bit more space to move up on the right. Deployment began with the Tau placing down their first units. They got to use Drone Scout here to get their Recon Drone up the board a little bit. Apart from that, it was a pretty even spread across the board from the Tau. I mirrored this approach as I wanted to have a pretty even spread and was going to rely on my unit's speed to get to those objectives early. In the scouting phase, I went with Infiltrate, wanting to flip an order a bit later in the turn, while JJ went with Recon. She didn't quite get how it worked at first, but after a quick correction, we sorted out that dash. Straight into the command phase here, both teams starting on 4 CP. For the Tau, it was a quiet one here as they decided to hold on to that precious commodity. For myself, I decided to use plunderers to give myself the ability to dash some operatives up forward, heading them towards some objectives. For TAC Ops, the Tau remained cagey, keeping everything close to their chest. While for myself, I revealed recover item, putting that just near that central objective, hoping to snag that early in the first turn. I also revealed secure vantage as I thought this map was set up beautifully to have two great vantage points in the middle of the battlefield that hopefully my speed would get me on quickly. It was the Transspectral Interference Pathfinder who kicked the game off for Commander JJ, moving forward and then having a dash into some cover to capture an objective. In response to this, the Fate Dealer mimicked the action, moving forward and capturing an objective of their own. The Tau continued to put the pressure forward with the communications expert here, moving forward and getting behind a barricade to either hopefully mark a light someone or maybe buff a teammate in the next turn. The Shade Runner slinked up the battlefield, pushing towards that objective just ahead, hoping that maybe a Tau would be silly enough to jump on there early and then get diced up in the next turn. The pressure continued to mount as the gun drone powered forward, lining up that objective just ahead of it where also my recover item token was. So if I didn't grab that marker this turn, it may be very difficult to get it later on. This did force my hand a little bit, so I grabbed the Phalarch and with a move and the free dash, he was able to get to that marker and pick it up. The Drone Controller Pathfinder went next and he lived up to his name after moving into some cover. He then took control of the Recon Drone, moving it up to the vantage point in the middle of the battlefield. Just one of the many shenanigans this Tau team had that can make them so powerful. It was now going to be a lot more difficult to get vantage on that central piece of terrain. I now grabbed the Starstorm Duelist, moving him up. I had plans to get this guy up close and personal with the Tau as quick as possible to show them that we also had some pretty impressive guns. Speaking of impressive guns, the Tau Marksman took this opportunity to move up behind some cover and keep a close eye on that objective on the right side of the battlefield. The Void Scarred Kanathi's power blades hungered for some Tau blood, so I moved him forward as far as possible to sneak through those doors later and start chopping up some dudes. The Tau continued to foot slog up the board with the blooded Pathfinder moving up behind cover. There was a lot of bodies now around the base of that building. I was a little bit worried that I wasn't going to be able to get that vantage again, so I had to come up with a plan to grab it quick. Promptly forgetting this plan, I decided instead to grab the Soul Weaver and move her to the middle of the battlefield. I had a lot of operatives lined up behind that wall uh, and I was sure they were going to be taking some damage soon, so she was there to start patching them up when things went down. Commander JJ started to show a bit of a tactical nous here, already sort of grasping the concept that she had more activations and that she was going to be able to sort of set herself up for later if she passed with some operatives. So she was happy where one of her gunners was sitting, so she passed with them for now. 
Seeing these cagey tactics and not wanting to be outdone, pride was on the line. I also took my wizard man here and just shuffled them just so they're hanging out of cover a little bit for maybe some lightning strikes in the next turn. The Assault Grenadier was itching to throw some grenades but didn't want to overcommit so just shuffled to the edge of the cover there, looking next turn to potentially whick some grenades at my leader. May force my hand a little bit as to what I have to do next turn, I may have to bail him out of there pretty quick. In the meantime it was the Kerr Knight Hunter and his useless birds chance to move up the battlefield and support the Shade Runner. More sneaky shenanigans from the Tau here as another one of their gunner operatives has decided to pass, thinking they're in a great position and to be fair they're not in a bad spot at all. The Tau are really playing the waiting game here and making me come to them. Finally it was time to get some action going in this turn and I took the opportunity to move my gunner up onto that vantage point there and he could see very clearly the recon drone on the central vantage point. Game on. Four attacks, hitting on three. Good news for you, terrible roll. Aww. So, I can. So, I'm gonna use two CP, because I missed three out of four shots then, hitting on three. So, re-roll of these. Oh, that's where I went wrong. I missed another one. So that cost me two CP, I've got two hits. So you're gonna just roll one, and you're looking for a four up. So you could use a CP to re-roll that. Let's, before you do that, so that means currently, that's two shots going through, because they're not crits, they're normal. So I'm gonna do 10 damage, you'll have two wounds left. If you re-roll this, only five damage will go through. You'll have seven wounds left. Yeah, I'll re-roll. Okay. That's a crit save, so you take out one. That's what I get for using your dice. Yeah. So the curse of using your opponent's dice strikes again and the blaster, one of the most reliable guns in the game as far as I'm concerned, has absolutely whiffed and the recon drone got off very lightly. The Corsairs were officially out of activations and the Tau had two left, so to add insult to my own injuries here, I totally forgot to overwatch that drone, but hey, I was too busy in teaching mode. The last two moves of the turn were for the Shazwi leader to pass and just stay in safety, and the medic moved up between the gunner and the marksman to revive them if they got into any trouble. So the first turning point is in the books and not a huge amount to report so far. Being able to get retrieve object early has been very good but my leader is in a bit of a tenuous position there so I might have to get him back to my lines quick smart before he gets grenaded in the face. I was able to snag Vantage thanks to my blaster guy which was lucky because he was looking at getting cut after failing to destroy that recon drone and then for me for getting Overwatch. It's the only reason he's still in the team, we're even on that one. For primary, the Tau were able to capture two of the objectives, and I was able to capture three. Apart from that, the game looks pretty evenly set up. The Tau are doing what the Tau want to do, they've got their gun lines set up, they've got hold of some objectives so they can keep scoring points. And for myself, while well, I really need to hustle, having recon as my tack ops really means I need to keep pushing forward and taking advantage of my maneuverability. Hopefully I can work around the Tau guns and their positionings. We'll have to find out in turning point two. Let's jump in. Highest gets to choose the initiative. Oh, so you can either make, you can make me go first or you can choose whatever you want, but you will probably want to go first. It's a four. It's a five. So you get to choose. Do you, you want, want to go first? No, do you want to go first or do you want to go second? You need to say that it was smart of me. I would say it's better for you to go first, yes. I would like to go first, please. Okay. So the Tau grab the initiative and head straight into playing some ploys. They're gonna play bonded for one CP. The Corsairs will retaliate here, playing outcast for one CP. This is a great one because when I find my operatives, I think a little bit spread out, this is gonna make me able to deal out a bit more punishment. 
The Tau are also going to declare their Art of War, declaring Kao Yon, so that's going to give them extra protection when they're in cover. Then we move on to declaring our Tac Ops. All the ones I need to declare currently are out there. While the Tau announce Eliminate Guards, which they place on my leader, they also go for Executioner on their Recon Drone, targeting my leader. I've got a sneaking suspicion that they've got Headhunter as well, so that is a lot of points uh, resting on them killing my leader first up, and to be honest, there's not much I can do about it. As predicted, the first thing Commander JJ's done is grab the recon drone, used a dash just to move it across to get clear line of sight on my leader, and they're going to open up for big money. They need six dice, rolling for four. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good bed skill. <laughs> Can you roll the one? Yep. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> Alright. So I was hitting on fours, so get rid of the two misses and put those all together. So that's good. That's two crits and two uh, two hits. Okay. Three dice. I'm looking for fours. I'm nervous. Oh Alright. I'm gonna survive but by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So the fat like has managed to survive through no skill of my own. Um, it was just pure luck there. I actually thought he was definitely very cooked. That's a lot of victory points that have gone begging there, but he is hugely, hugely wounded and he needs to get out of there. So that dictated my next move. It was time to get out of dodge and I ran him back towards the medic with a little bit of a tear in his eye. The tower offensive continued and the blooded pathfinder took advantage of old Sir Whiffington up on the vantage point, the blaster guy that is, jumping up to see if he can teach him how to shoot. Four dice hitting on threes. Where's the wound? Where's the wound? Yeah, good. So that's two. So that's two hits because see that now that makes my life a lot harder. So now I've got three dice. And I need fours. And if I fail, if I don't pass more than one of these, you'll kill him. He's super dead. <laughs> Wait, why am I fiving you? <laughs> so the blaster's day went from bad to worse and he is out of here. First blood to the blooded, I guess. This did at least give me an opening for some revenge still. I was able to grab my Starstorm Duelist, swing him up onto that vantage point, and got ready to open fire with my pistol barrage. Until I remembered that the blast pistol only has a range of square. Looks like I'm just going to have to use the one gun. So it's still four attacks on three, three, four. Range is pentagon, so I'm only going to get one pistol shot here now. So four attacks, hitting on threes, three, four, range pentagon and it is Beef Randang with a reroll. Yeah, so for Outcasts, that's a critical. Two regular hits, and that turns, because of that, turns this into a hit as well. Oh, I see a crit, that's a good start. Two crits? Yeah. All right, so you got seven wounds. Wow, okay, that, my, that's a good, all right, so you block two crits. Jeez Louise, so you block two crits. Oh, which is good. You fail those two though. So that is three, six damage. You're alive on one wound. The blooded imitating my leader, surviving on one wound there. Well played to you, sir. Uh, I'm not sure how Overwatch is gonna come around this turn, but it may be painful if it goes the Tau's way. The Tau wanted to take back one of their earlier aggressive moves here with their communications operative running away from the oncoming Shade Runner, or maybe it was because they were scared about the little Felchu attack bird. I don't blame them. But he headed back around the corner and then buffed up the Marksman with an extra APL. Storm clouds were gathering as the Wayseeker decided to take matters into their own hands and get rid of that recon drone up on top of the vantage point. I need to roll four dice, looking for threes, four, five, AP one. 
All right, and because it's outcast, I don't get that because I didn't get any crits. A slight rules mistake here. I did forget that the recon drone doesn't get the cover because it's in engage. It can't actually retain any cover saves. And we also then doubled down on the mistake by giving it cow yon. So it actually retained two cover saves here, which really nullified this attack with only one going through. After all was said and done, the recon drone was frustratingly down to two wounds left. With disappointment in their heart, the Wayseeker then took the opportunity to run across to the left side of the board in cover to help with that side of the battlefield. The tower were looking to take control of some more objectives, so took the gun drone and moved it up to that central objective to snatch it away from me. The Voidscar Soul Weaver took centre stage next and I used some Soul Heal, that's right, Soul Heal, I'll never do that again, uh, to heal up my leader to keep him in the fight. So D3. Doesn't the can, just doesn't stay in the tray. I did notice though that you can actually use this more than once per activation. I was very tempted to do this, but I did see an opportunity for myself to score Vantage again and finally get rid of that pesky recon drone. So the Soul Weaver clambered up the side of the building to tie up the drone. That was also going to let me take control of that vantage point, which if fingers crossed it remained just the two of them up there, I should score that at the end of the turn. The Assault Grenadier's early timid moves are sort of putting him a little bit out of position right now, so he took the opportunity to run up and get behind the barricade and fingers crossed, get into the action next turn. I was starting to see that left flank was looking a little bit vulnerable, especially with the three objectives over on that side. So as a little bit of a remedy slash still giving me a bit of swing room later, I just dashed the Fate Dealer back slightly so he could have a good line of sight on both sides of the board. The drone controller was feeling a little isolated out on that right flank, so he decided to run back amongst his friends and take cover. The Shade Runner saw this as the perfect opportunity to move up and secure that objective. But was it a ruse? The commander JJ had set her finest trap yet, with me totally forgetting that her marksman gunner had the extra APL, so he was actually able to move, dash, and line up a shot on the Shade Runner. Clever girl. Psych. Okay, you re-roll one, <laughs> yeah. was too, um... Got too excited. All right. Props. <laughs> All right. So currently, I block one. That is four, four. That is eight damage. It's dead. What? Nah, wait. I've got a CP, which I will spend. Oh, <laughs> that's been dead. So the Shade Runner is gunned down with barely a whimper being heard. Seeing their teammates struck down, the Kanathi wants revenge and charges into one of the other railgun totem towers. Four attacks, hitting on three. Not a great start, but it's lethal five up, so that becomes a crit. So one of my misses becomes a hit. And then I only reroll one. So just the one, two crits. All right. Oh, oh, you beauty. All right. Well, you're on a fire. My guy's got a little bit of a special rule. He's got bladed stance. So each time he fights in combat, I can resolve one successful hit before the attacker. So I can do basically do a, a parry for free. And then I'll parry your other one. So you've got no hits now. So I've basically parried you out. I then have two go through. Two normals, which are four damage each, which is eight damage, so that should kill you. So the rail gun is off the table. We did make a slight mistake here, and by we, I mean me, uh, as I definitely should have caught it. JJ had actually set that rail gun up really well next to the medic operative, so the medic should have had a chance to revive the rail gun. That was the whole point of them being there. Um, unfortunately, we both missed it. Um, me, obviously, because I'm just, I just want to win. I'm just sweaty as. Um, and JJ because she didn't know. So, um, forgiveness please. JJ, not to be put off by this, got straight back into action, grabbing the gunner with the iron rifle and lining up some revenge. You can re-roll one of those misses for free. So take one of those dice, the misses, and re-roll. Because you've got, yeah, your miss -o. So re-rolling one. Yep, so you got one CP left, go for it. 
and say that's big because you're a filthy cheat. Now, because that now means I lose one of my save dice because that's now made AP1 because you got the crit. So I now have two saves, four ups. Okay, that's equally huge. I was due a decent roll. So let's quickly check what's the damage of a crit. And you had just a crit, which is the five damage goes through. So my guy's got three wounds left. Very lucky to get away with only a slight baking there. It was time to get back on track and do the thing you meant to do in Kill Team and that score victory points. I was going to get a bit greedy here and try and get a bit of a two for one. I moved my Kerr Knight Hunter up onto that objective to capture it and then was hoping with a sneaky little pistol shot here to take out that railgun sniper. Pretty good. Three. So, you're in cover. You did a rule that lets you retain two for cover. So you will automatically block two of mine. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to help you. Thank you. So he's got a five up save. So one more, looking for a five. If you get a five or a six here, you'll take no damage, which will be very upsetting. Okay, so you're gonna take just one shot's gonna go through. That's gonna be three damage. It was very optimistic of me to believe I was gonna be able to capture the point and get the kill. Hey, but you've gotta, you know, be a positive person. You've gotta be glass half full and you gotta take those risks. It was the tower's turn to respond now and the medic was about to do some very unmedic like things. Having been forgotten before, he was out for blood, wanting to finish off the canapi. Okay, two. All right, so there's no AP here, but I don't get any cover because um, you're too close. So I've got three dice here. I need I need to make two four-ups or he's dead because I've only got three damage left and your gun does four or five damage. So if I don't get two four-ups, he's dead. Oh! <laughs> Damn it. Kablammy indeed, and that was the end of the Kanathi. He's out of here. We did actually forget Bonded here, which would have made that an even more effective hit for the Tau, but lucky for us, it didn't matter. This took me into Overwatch as all my operatives had had their activation now, so it was time to hopefully get another kill on the board. I've selected the Starstorm Duelist here to hopefully finish off the Blooded Pathfinder. Oosh. Yep, so it's three dice on fours. And you need two crits or he's not going to survive. And you can do it again. You can definitely tell Commander JJ's enthusiasm for the game is picking up with her reactions here. She also showed some tactical nous here as well, grabbing the transpectral interference guy, that one moving him over to contest that objective so I wouldn't be able to score it at the end of the turn. Very savvy move. Not sure about the model placement 100%. Still think that needs a little bit of work, but we're definitely getting there. Things swung back to me for some Overwatch here and I was gonna use my Hunter to hopefully finish off that pesky, pesky rail gun. All right, so crit, normal, outcasts turns that into a hit and rending turns that into a critical. Okay. So, no, no, not necessarily because. I think he survived. What? So, two blocks that crit, that blocks that crit. Three damage, you're alive with one wound left. That is straight up bullshit. <laughs> Foiled again by that dreaded double cover save. That one has uh, really been holding me back a little bit, or at least keeping that guy alive, which is very frustrating. For the last activation of the turn, the Shazwi just played it safe here and just passed. I was lucky enough to be supported once again by the legends over at Logitech who have sent me some fantastic new gear to keep things looking nice and spruced up, nice and schmick if you will.
The first up was the Lytro Beam LX, which is a brand new LED light panel, which has a standard sort of white LED strip through the front, which can be adjusted for different warmth and tones. But this is obviously to light you as the presenter up, which is fantastic for streaming. It's also got a second set of LED strips on the back, which can be used to make everything just look cool. There's a whole range of colors and options you can use. Uh, and you can even go into even more detail if you actually use the Logitech app as well. There's even more control and options that you can use. Super easy to plug in, it's plug and play. It comes with a nice stand, so it sits beautifully above your monitor. The second upgrade, and I'm not gonna lie, this one is definitely my favorite because it's something I've had my eye on for a little while, or at least something I was really, really wanting to upgrade. I've been using the Yeti microphones for a long while now, and they've always been fantastic for the podcast. Super easy to plug and play and set up, but I wanted to take it to the next level, and this microphone's let me do that. This is the Yeti GX. And the reason I'm excited about this mic is that it's actually got a dynamic mic capsule, which basically gives it a super cardioid pickup pattern. So it gives you that more broadcast and polished kind of sound and feel to it. As we touched on earlier about LEDs, it's also got the ability to sync up the LEDs that are in it with other lights and other setup systems. So you can really customize how your setup looks. If you want it to be part of the set, part of the feature, it can really blend in or you can make it stand out as a dynamic piece in itself. You can also chuck it into the Blue Voice software and this can help you really protect things against clipping. You can really customize the mic to your sound, your voice, so you're sounding as good as possible. So a huge, huge thank you to the legends over at Logitech for hooking me up, helping to keep this production grow and supporting this channel. It's a fantastic way to hopefully keep this content improving because that's something I'm always trying to do. Uh, I know none of my battle reports are ever perfect or polished to 100%. They're always a work in progress. So I'm always trying to find ways to make them easier to listen to, easier to watch, easier to make me to edit and put them together. And all these little things go a long way to helping Plus, it really helps with the podcast. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you go check out the podcast, Kill Team Casuals, uh, where myself, Russ from GFN Gaming, Ben from Battle Brothers Tabletop, three different countries, talk and kill team in the most casual of ways because we're not pros, we just love the game. Let's head back and get to the Turning Point 2 wrap up. So Turning Point 2 was pretty action-packed, lots happening. At the end for primaries, the Tau managed to capture three of the objectives, while the Corsairs were only able to nab two, so a little bit of work to do on the primary there. Lucky for me, the Tau had a bit of a Barry Croc arc getting their secondaries. Thanks to my leader being able to make a run for it, uh, that stopped them getting a lot of points. On the flip side, I was able to get another with secure vantage for that vantage point in the middle. I was also able to get the second one for secure item as my leader, again, had survived and made a run. So him surviving and then being able to get back into cover was absolutely huge. I probably got a little bit lucky there. That recon drone probably should have gunned him down. I've only dropped a couple of operatives, so I feel pretty confident I'm in a strong spot to keep pushing the tower, but they do have a lot of scary weapons there and JJ is definitely getting ahead around this game. So it's only going to get harder from here. Let's head down to the battlefield now for a big turning point number three. So the command phase of turning point three and it's time to spend some CP. Commander JJ leads off spending one CP on bonded while I double down and go to outcasts again as it's been pretty good to me so far. In terms of revealing any tack ops or declaring targets, the Kernite Hunter has been made the target of Eliminate Guards. JJ also got her Marksman to be her Executioner targeting the Kernite. So again, a lot of points tied up in one operative. If he can somehow survive, I might make a sneaky escape again. For myself, I declared the Starstorm Duelist as my courier, hoping to sneak him down the board to get some more points. The first activation went exactly as expected here. JJ selecting the Marksman and targeting the Hunter, looking to score some early points. Four attacks, but you'll be hitting on fours now instead of threes because yeah. you're wounded. So fours on fours, mortal wounds on crits, lethal fiver. So at the moment you've done two mortal wounds because this is technically a critical. So you've got those. Do you want to re-roll one of those with your last CP? Doing it. Last CP is going on a re-roll. So four plus. Yeah. 
Nervous. Uh, uh. Oh! I need one of these two to stay alive. So this is big. I need one. I've only got two dice. I need a four up. Oh! So I take four plus two mortal wounds. So six damage. He's going to be alive with two wounds left. So I got very lucky once again. That's two times now. The Eliminate Guards and Executioner Target has just survived. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer they'll be around, but I've got some tough choices to make now with my first activation. In the end, I've decided to play it safe. I wanted to keep my leader operative alive. Um, he's got the ability to deal out some hurt, but I've got a big feeling that uh, JJ's with Headhunter in that hand as well. So I want to make sure I can avoid them scoring any easy VP. And while I'm playing it nice and conservative, just trying to stay alive, JJ is out for blood here. Selecting the Transspectral Interference Pathfinder here to try and take a cheeky shot at my Void Scarred Wayseeker. Uh, this was one of the other things I was very worried about. This could potentially flip that objective and cost me a valuable model. Let's see how the dice play out. Oh, that's a good roll. That is a good roll. Um, and you're not bonded because you don't have anyone close to you. All right, so a crit and two hits. Fuck, I was really hoping I'd whiff that then. Four ups. Oh, I think I'm dead here. Oh. Seeing one of their brethren struck down so viciously, the fate dealer decided to deal out some fate. They dashed forward and targeted the gunner with the ion rifle. Four shots. He's on two. He's on two. a sniper. He's very good. Uh, not yet. So four shots hitting on twos. So it's mortal wounds three. So you've taken three mortal wounds. So you have th no cover. So three saves at five up. Oh, that's a good roll. All right. Three, six, nine. You're still dead. But it was a very good roll. So a very dangerous operative off the board, very happy with that, but the Tau were quick to hit back. The drone operator scrambled forwards before using one of the powers of the Pathfinder team. They've got lots of group activations here. He then activated one of the drones, which flew up the battlefield and targeted my fate dealer to deal him his fate back, I guess. Oh, Jesus, you're rolling in weird ways, but that's good. <laughs> So re-roll those two. Relentless, that's so good. Yeah, All right, so you, jeez, oh, okay. No AP, I don't get cover because you got within range of my cover, so four ups. Oh, it's filth. I must admit, I didn't actually realize how good the gun drones were. I mean, look, it is in the name gun drones. They've obviously got a job to do, but that was uh, pretty impressive. It was time for me to stop my opponent scoring some points. So I quickly grabbed my Kernite Hunter, charging them headlong into that pesky marksman. Hitting on fours. Oh, one. <laughs> That's filth, you're dead. But no, nah, because it's close combat, okay. so I just that one will just go through. It certainly was turning into a very bloody battle. Although I was making some headway killing the Tau, I was also down to just half my own models, and the Tau wanted to add to that body count. I thought I'd been really smart with my placement here with my hunter, using that terrain to at least give some obscuring, but with a little bit of finagling, the Shazwe was able to actually move around and still get a shot at my hunter. Oh, that's a good roll. That's a good roll. All right. I'm in trouble here. So I get one for cover. And now, because I'm already really damaged, I need a save. So a four plus and a crit save. Okay. So easy. Oh. <laughs> Neither. So, so you and you'll get an extra victory point now because you've got your eliminate guard target. Oh.
The scores are really starting to tighten up now, so I needed to get some points on the board, but it left me in an interesting position. My Starstorm Duelist needed to do something. I had selected him as my courier, but I think he actually needed to go the other way. I needed to secure that objective still in my backfield, and the Transpectral Interference dude needed to go. So he jumped down and opened fire. Starstorm Duelist, here we go. Gonna use, do the fusion pistol this time. This is the super powerful one, which I didn't get to do last time because I mooked up. So, four attacks, hitting on threes. That is terrible. So, don't cry, don't let us see you cry. I do, no, I don't even get outcasts because I didn't get a crit. So you've got only one save, it's AP2. All right, so that's a regular goes through. That does five damage. It's got three damage left. I need some to go right here. Four attacks on threes. It's not a great roll either. Okay, he is dead. That was lucky. I was thinking you were gonna really ruin my night there. And just while I was patting myself on the back for some clever play, the Tau found a way to ruin that. The Assault Grenadier moved forward with a move and a dash and was able to contest that objective that I thought I'd just secured. I was fast running out of operatives to go with, so I decided the close combat with the drone had to be done now. Four attacks hitting on three is lethal five up. Yep, you're very dead. <laughs> With one drone down, the bloodlust was still there to eat more machines, so I charged my operative down into the other drone to tie them up for the next turn and capture that objective. Another plan that I'm really happy with quickly snuffed out by the Tau as they moved an operative up to contest that objective that I just thought I'd secure it. I was out of operatives and no overwatch was available for me, so we moved to the last activation of the Tau. For their last activation, they moved an operative up and stole my other objective. I was running out of primary points very quickly. The tower were definitely going to put a bit of hurt on the scoreboard here. Another very action-packed turning point comes to an end and the scores remain very tight. The big thing here is the primary score has swung heavily in the favor of the tower. They secured three primaries, whereas I secured only one. I've scored four out of a possible six on my secondary so far. I've got two left to score for Courier, but couldn't get it done this turn. The Tau scored just the one for Eliminate Guard, so they're still having a little bit of trouble with their secondaries. It's gonna be interesting to see how many models are left at the end of this game. There's already only a few left on the board. The big thing though is how are we gonna score points? I don't have many secondaries left, so I've gotta lock down those primaries. I finally got initiative. Oh. So a big initiative roll, hopefully giving me the chance to keep the Void Scarred in the game. We both decided to keep our CP for a sneaky re-roll in the right situation. And for TAC Ops, I went with my Medic as a courier this turn. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to make it work, but I don't think any of my other operatives are really in a position to get close to my opponent's deployment zone. So if anyone can do it, it's going to have to be the Medic. Commander JJ went for broke again here, putting Eliminate Guards on the Starstorm Duelist and selecting the Assault Grenadier also to kill the Starstorm Duelist. There was a few things I wanted to do with the first activation, but the big one was I had to get some primary back. So I selected my Falark here. He dashed forward and lined up the communication specials. For Neuro Disruptor, um, hitting on threes because I'm wounded. I'll use my one CP for a reroll. All of them? No, just one. Okay, so two hits. <laughs> Fuck! All right, you've got a CP. Currently, he's dead. If you roll a CP, but it is a, obviously it's a five up, it's a low chance, but it's possible. Oh, I'm doing it! Risking it for the biscuit it! I love it. That's what I would do too. I'd live dangerously. <laughs> they can entertain me. Yeah, exactly. Do it for the people. Oh! I'm so fucking happy you've got no idea. 
No. With that filthy tower off the objective, I then moved my leader onto it to claim it for myself. And I also tried to make sure I used a little bit of sneak positioning here to make my operative obscured or give him as much chance as possible to be obscured from any Tau guns for the rest of the turn. It was the move I feared, but I also knew it was coming. I had tossed up between moving this operative first and in hindsight, it may have actually been the play. I don't think the Tau could have got to my leader if I had waited on this strategy, but I was a little bit spooked by the idea of only having the three wounds or that that Tau operative would move off the objective that I wanted to shoot and then slingshot onto. Enough about all the things I did wrong, here's what the Tau did right. The Assault Grenadier hoiked a fusion grenade at my Starstorm Duelist. The dice are rolling slower, you're getting tired. Oh, I know more it's BP. Oh. For these two, for these two. For those two, gone, okay. But it's AP2, so I've only got one dice here. I need a four up. Oh no, and I've got no CP. I think he's dead, because it's, okay. what's the damage? It's four, three, yeah, eight damage. He's dead. I needed to save that. That would have kept him alive. Oh. This just left me with the one operative and not too many plays left to try out. I wanted to obviously kill some Tau, but I also wanted to take them off some objectives and hopefully score some of my secondaries. It's a tall order with one operative, but I had a little bit of a plan. First part was to kill this drone. Four attacks, hitting on threes, lethal fiber. All right, so that's gone. That goes to a crit, because lethal fiver. All up into Grizzly. All right, so you got one. I'll parry that with my crit, so you don't get to hit me. I'll hit you with two normals, which is eight damage. So you oh, dear. Yep. So that was part one complete. The next thing to do was get my courier couriering ring. So I charged them around into that operative on the other side of the terrain there, hoping to keep them tied up, stay in combat, stay alive, and score that extra VP. The Tau though weren't having this and went into full combat Tau mode, hoping to either kill me or kill themselves so they could shoot me. Good plan. Roll, you rolled good again there. Jerk. All right, crit and a reg. I've got four three ups. Oh, okay. Oof, Eesh. okay. Yeah. So, you get to choose first here. All right, so you want to do the maximum damage? Yep, so your maximum damage is that, which is a three, I believe, three damage for a crit. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then I'll go, now it's my turn. Okay. Then I'll go, I'm going to take one of mine and I'm going to parry your other attack. Mm -hmm. So that means now there's, you've got no more attacks. These do four damage each. Kill, kill. So, so another one bites the dust there, but in retrospect, I did have a bit of a moment here where I completely forgot you can just choose to parry nothing. You don't have to use both of your attacks. Uh, for some reason, the heat of the moment there, I thought you couldn't. Um, but hey, it's been FAQ'd. I could have just parried uh, all these hits out and stayed locked in combat, which would have been very good for survivability. Um, but I didn't, I forgot. There you go. Also, please note, once we remove the Tau, it looks like my guy is on the objective. He is not. That was an accident. He was bumped when we removed the dead Tau. So as much as I would like it, I'm not claiming that objective. This was a fair oversight by me. I probably could have found a way just to sneak a little bit of the base on when I charged, um, but at the time I wasn't really thinking about it. All I was thinking about was getting courier and getting the model far enough or further enough around to be close enough to my opponent's deployment zone. Uh, that's what happens. It's a game of inches or sometimes in this case, millimeters. The Tau, knowing my plan here to get that courier close enough, wanted to put an end to that nonsense and their leader swung around to take aim. It's not a great roll. All right, four ups, my love. Oh, one of those, but was not a crit. So I'll block the crit and a regular goes through. How much damage is a regular from your boss man? 
Four to five, so four damage for Rega. He's got one wound left. So the Corsair able to hold on by the hair on their chinny chin chins just there. Waiting to overwatch here and surprisingly I could shoot someone. The leader was now in range of my shuriken pistol. Two, you'll get one for cover. Two. <laughs> you saved all of it. So no surprises there, the Shazwi was able to shrug off the Shuriken pistol. This meant there was just one activation left in the game and it was gonna be a big one. The medic who'd done basically no medic work throughout the whole game continued to just wanna inflict pain and lined up my one wound soul weaver. Oh, it's good. It's very good. All right, I need Three fours. I don't have a choice. These are all heavy. If I fail any of these, you did. Oh, okay. Holy shit. Holy schnitzels. All right. <laughs> Sorry. There's a child asleep in the house. I got excited. Sorry. Oh. Is he safe? And with that, the smoke over the battlefield begins to settle and we can finally tally up the points to see who has won. The Corsairs score another one for the Soul Weaver, somehow managing to stay alive and getting me one for Courier. And then I'd captured two primary objectives for another two points for a total of 13. The Tau, on the other hand, had done very well indeed. They'd actually managed to lock down three primaries, which gave them a total score of 14, so the Tau have taken it away by one point. Let's head back to me in the studio for a bit more of a breakdown. So there you have it, a Tau victory. They snuck away with it at the end. Commander JJ should be very, very proud. Um, there's a, a little bit to take away from this game for myself. It was a big mistake to make at the end there, not getting that base just on that objective. I think I could have towed that objective and still got Courier. I would have tied the game up. Could have been interesting. The Tau did a surprisingly good job too with the amount of bodies they had being able to sneak those objectives away from me, especially after I'd taken a few casualties, although I had the speed. Um, the Tau did a great job of getting up that left flank uh, and obviously putting pressure on that side, flipped it a couple of times, or even did the smart thing of just contesting those objectives so I wasn't scoring. But let's be honest, you actually don't care uh, about my breakdown of the game. It was Commander JJ's first game. So let's bring her in, jump over to her, and she can tell you about her thoughts. Let's go. Okay, wait, this is really low now. Just let me. All right, here we go. The moment you have all been waiting for. You were asking me, JJ slash JJ Bink slash Reese's wife. I was about to say husband. Definitely a wife can confirm. I bet you were wondering, did I enjoy the game? Well, the answer is no. Okay. No, I'm kidding. No, it was a really, really fun to do, to be honest. Like I, I look, I tip my hat off to you guys because there are so many rules that you have to remember, which is absolutely nuts. Like, I don't know how you remember everything. It's like, it's not as simple as rolling a, like, some dice and just being like, yeah, boom, that person's dead. It's like, yeah, boom, that person's wounded. Oh, but then, but then that crit. See that? I know the, I know the, I know the things. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, yeah. Well, that crit is redundant, or it's not as effective. And I'm just like, pardon me, why? It was definitely um uh, a lot of a lot of fun. Like I feel like. Would I play it again? Probably. Look, I think I would because I was really, I was actually really getting into it. As you could probably hear in the background, I was kind of, I kind of forgot that you could hear me in the microphone and I was swearing a lot, <laughs> which means I was getting into it a fair bit. Um, my objective was just to bloody, just to kill. All right. That was my objective. I was like, I'm going to just try my eyes. I had no idea that my medic could heal. I mean, I did. But then, like, I forgot which one was a medic because I kind of all looked the same a little bit and I had to keep asking Reese who's who. 
So that was a little bit hard to kind of distinguish. So maybe if I, I might choose a different team in the future where I can really distinguish the different kind of dudes because it's kind of hard to tell which is which. But then maybe I'm just not paying attention enough, you know, and that's probably most likely fair, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> but look, I'm proud to say that I won. A bloody won because Reese forgot to put his little dude on on the objective. All right. So that was a bit that was a bit stupid, wasn't it? <laughs> Idiot. Am I right? No. Um so I won by one point because of that, which is pretty crazy. Um uh, I I thought the annoying thing is no matter how many times you can kill someone in the game, it doesn't actually like mean you win. So that that's kind of cool a little bit. But um you know, I thought it was called kill team because the objective was to kill the other team. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But um, I guess not. I guess not. That's not. That's not. It. Somewhat is, but um, it's it's about standing on a circle. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought, okay, no worries. So that was a thing I learned. And um, but look, it was a lot of fun. Enjoyed it. I feel like um, if I played it again. It would definitely be really hard for Reese because basically he's playing two teams because I can't remember all the rules and I ain't got no time for reading up on the rules every single time <laughs> of the different kind of teams. Maybe I will get it. The thing is may- maybe I'll pick a team that I like. You guys tell me what you think what team I should use, let's be honest. I want you guys to tell me and and then maybe next time I'll do some studying before I do it. All right. Okay. But thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you follow Reese. All right. Just do it. He's a good egg. All right. He means well. Uh, love from your unsupportive wife, JJ Bink. <laughs> you can follow me on my socials at JJ Bink over here. We're going to put it up here, right? Right in the edit. We're going to, anyways. All right. Thank you. And uh, good night. Take care. Garnier. I think that was good. I don't know if that was good. What the hell happened to my chair? Oh. That's that's the overview from JJ Bink. Uh, you hear it, heard it here first. It's fun, sort of, but it might not be. But it was not. But it was good. Um. It's awesome as that she played. We really actually did have a lot of fun. Uh, we had to do it late at night after we'd put our um, child to sleep. Uh, and it actually, we had to play over two nights. So it was a little bit of an, an ordeal just between exhaustion and time. Um, but she did amazingly well. The thing that I found the most interesting about playing um, a, a player like uh, JJ was that she had no reference whatsoever for wargaming at all. So most people you bring in to play a game, they may have played a lot of similar video games that'll have a lot of similar terminology or ways of achieving victory. But for her, um, she plays The Sims 4. She's a gaming streamer that plays The Sims 4. So she does come from an, uh, a nerdy background, but of a very different type. So there was no keywords or things that worked across her understanding. So everything was... Uh, explaining from that absolute bare base level. So what's an objective? Uh, APL, uh, GA, like a lot of these terms and terminology that as kill team players or even war gamers, when we talk about tack ops and strategic ploys and tactical ploys, we have some of those vernacular things already in our mind or when we hear it, we can pretty quickly line up what it does and how it works and, and where those things tie into how to play the game for her completely blank slate so it took a little bit longer to get through all those uh moments and time but the best part was the longer we played the more that she just loved the best part it's a dice game and people just love rolling dice so once we sort of got through those basic rules um and we got her understanding about how the alternating activations and what she was trying to achieve uh, she really, really got on board and that was really, really fun uh, to see. You can probably hear her excitement level for rolling dice uh, and swearing at results uh, escalate throughout the whole battle. So that was really fun to see and really fun to hear.
If you've made it to the end, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, a massive thank you again to the legends at Logitech um, for helping us out with this wonderful microphone you see pictured here, uh, this wonderful lighting setup that's coming from here. Those guys and girls do an amazing job of looking after us here at Threes to Wound, uh, and I couldn't appreciate it anymore, that's for sure. If you're after some more Kill Team content, obviously make sure you've liked and subscribed here, but obviously the Kill Team Casuals podcast with myself, Ben, wait, that's Russ. Ben, sorry, that was backwards to me looking in the camera. Um, the Kill Team Casuals podcast is there for you, where we talk everything Kill Team, but always from the angle of the casual player, uh, and the player who uh, is hoping to be better at the game they love. That's our shtick. That's our angle. We've got Australia covered. We've got Ben in the US. We've got Russ in England. We cover the world with Kill Team and bring it all together. So make sure you tune in and check out that for a good laugh because that's the probably the only thing you'll take away from it. Until next time, thank you so much again for watching. Keep playing Kill Team and we'll see you in the next vid.